Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. We all know that there are manufacturing plants situated all over the world, producing some much needed components. However, not all of us know the processes through which these products are made. So today, we will be taking a look at 10 incredibly interesting manufacturing processes. Subscribe to the channel for more entertaining videos and click the like button to support the channel. You can turn on post notifications to make sure you do not miss out on any of our updates. Number 10. Blades Manufacturing Process Initially, a design of the blade is made. Certain factors such as its thickness, dimensions, chemical properties and weight are taken into consideration. Then the blade is made using raw steel. The selection of raw steel includes carbon alloy steel, high speed steel, tool steel and others. The selection depends on the expected characteristics of the finished blade. Once the raw product has been selected, the outline of the blade is cut from the steel stock. This cutting can be done via two methods, water jet cutting or laser cutting. In water jet cutting, highly pressurized water cuts through the steel stock. Laser cutting is done via laser or amplified light. After the blade is cut, it is hardened in a furnace with a temperature of 1750 degrees Fahrenheit. The time the blade spends in the furnace is decided based on the type of raw material used. Quickly, the blade is cooled after it has spent its required time in the furnace. Until the blade reaches the room temperature, molecular changes will continue to occur. Once it reaches this temperature, it is at its peak hardness. Then, it is annealed to reduce its hardness for efficient performance. For this, the blade gets sent back into the furnace for over 4 hours at 300 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. When the blade gets sufficiently tempered, it is flattened and tensioned to remove the inbuilt stresses in it. Then the blade is finely grinded to produce a smooth edge. Number 9. Car Tire Production Process Tires are made out of natural and synthetic rubber, carbon black, sulfur, and other chemicals. The selection of chemicals depends on the expected chemical properties of the tire at the end of production. To begin with, a mixture of the raw materials in appropriate proportions is made to form the rubber compound. There are automated systems that contain several formulas and can automatically dispense specific portions of rubber and chemicals for the mixture. Then, enormous mixers compound the rubber and the chemicals as one. Each mixture is milled over again under the influence of heat to break some bonds in the mixture and blend the chemicals together. Extra chemicals are infused into the mix to produce the final mix. A combination of heat and friction is added to the mixture to soften the rubber component and ensure the chemicals are evenly distributed. The mix goes through rolling mills that compress it into thick sheets. These sheets are used to form certain aspects of the tire. Then the rubber passes through an extruder and forced through a die to generate a layer of rubber. Then, the rubber and beads are fed into a tire assembly machine that shapes the outline of the tire plies. Extruded layers of rubber are fixed permanently while the assembled tire is detached from the machine. Next, the tire is cured at temperatures up to 280 degrees for an interval of time. Finally, the tire is inspected before it is sent off for distribution. Number 8. PVC Pipe Production Process PVC pipes are generally used to create pipe systems that are void of leakages. These pipes can be joined either by a solvent cement through the use of a rubber seal or by welding them together. The pipe's raw material is fed into an extruder, either by a volumetric or gravimetric control system. Here, the raw product is heated up to about 200 degrees via friction and electricity. Afterwards, the melted material is forced through a cavity known as the die head and made to take on the shape of a pipe. According to specifications, the pipe is calibrated into suitable proportions and cooled down by water. Lastly, the pipe is cut into various lengths. Number 7. Spring Manufacturing Process A spring is a component that returns to its original shape after an initially applied force is removed. Springs are mostly made out of steel alloys such as stainless steel, high carbon 
and chrome vanadium. Other metallic components such as phosphor bronze and beryllium copper alloy can also be used to make springs. A straight wire is wound into a coil using an arbor or a mandrel using a lathe or any other spring winding machine. This process is known as cold winding. For its counterpart, hot winding, the metal is heated up till it's red hot and wrapped around a mandrel. Immediately, it is removed and inserted into oil to cool it and harden it. To relieve its acquired stresses, the spring is heated in an oven at a specific temperature for a particular amount of time and allowed to cool gently. Then, the ends are grinded into flat edges if necessary before the spring's surface is exposed to tiny balls of steel that beat it smoothly and press the steel lying just beneath the surface. Next, the spring is set continuously to fix its required length and pitch. After this, the spring is coated by plating it with another metal, coated with liquid rubber or painted. Number 6. Pencil Manufacturing Process The key component of a pencil is its graphite, also known as lead. Sometimes, wax or other chemicals are added to the graphite. Then, the wood that encloses the lead, usually cedar, is also important. The erasers attached to the pencils are made out of rubber and pumice. Depending on the desired result, the mixture of graphite and clay can vary. If more graphite is present in the mixture, the pencil is said to be softer and produce darker lines, and vice versa. Using an extruder, the mixture of graphite and wax is passed through a mold to create tiny strings, which are cut and dried in an oven. The logs of cedar are cut into slats, which are shaped to have a flat surface. Next, they go under a cutter head that makes a specific groove along the length of each slat. Glue is applied on half of the slats, and the dried mixture is laid in the cut grooves. The glued slats with graphite and unglued slats are compressed by a hydraulic press until the glue is dried. The compressed slats are transported and shaped into, usually, hexagonal shapes. Then their surfaces are smoothed by abrasives and varnish is applied sufficiently. The pencils are passed through shapers to make sure there is no excess varnish and they are all of equal length. Lastly, erasers are attached to the pencils using ferrules and a heated stamp is used to imprint the manufacturer's logo onto the pencils. Number 5. Glass Bottle Manufacturing Process Glass bottles are one of the most versatile products on the planet. Gobs of molten glass are carefully poured into molds using funnels. The baffle inputs compressed air into the mold to produce the neck of the bottle and its body. A plunger works inside the body to form the parison. The mold is opened and the neck ring keeps the glass bottle in place till it is inverted. The parison is reheated till it can be smoothed and its components are uniformly distributed. The blow mold takes in one last blow to tighten the glass against it to produce its final shape. The formed glass bottle is detached from the mold and made to cool. The glass bottle is then transported to be packaged for shipping. Number 4. Plastic Tank Manufacturing Process Plastic tanks are used in strategic locations to store the sometimes scarce natural resource, water. First, polyurethane granules are mixed with a black color concentrate. The mixture is broken down into granules to ensure the carbon black is evenly distributed. The rotational molding machine is heated to almost 300 degrees Celsius. The granulated mixture is added into the mold and the mold is rotated at a low speed to generate a homogeneous layer of plastic. Slowly, the plastic begins to agglutinate the mold and the mold forms a monolithic layer against its surface. The rotation process continues while the plastic coagulates. The compound is also simultaneously cooled till the plastic reaches its solid state. Here, the plastic product is detached from the mold and undergoes a quality test. Once it passes this test, the plastic tank is packaged to be put into the market. Number 3. Wrench Manufacturing Process The initial model of the wrench is created through thermal forging. This model is then annealed to make it pliable for subsequent operations. The model is rubbed against sand in a rolling barrel to separate carbide particles. Next, it is shaped into a desired wrench and a part of its front section is cut to achieve a specific size. Then, the wrench is reheated to ensure it is capable of withholding the stress generated by twisting a hard object. A portion of its surface is fine processed till it can be electroplated. Then, 
a layer of coating is added to prevent it from corroding. If there are any deformations present on the wrench, they're taken care of with heat. Then the wrench is attached to an external part or accessory using a locking mechanism. Number 2. Cigarette Manufacturing Process Tobacco is the most crucial of all ingredients required in producing cigarettes. Rolling papers and synthetic filters are also used in the process. To produce cigarettes, tobacco must be grown and harvested. After eight weeks of planting, the initial seedlings in seedbeds are transplanted into the ground. As they grow gradually, the plant's heads are manually broken to ensure the leaves grow more. Before they're harvested, the plants stay for a period of 90 to 120 days on the fields. Then they are harvested, either by priming or by cutting their stalks. The leaves are cured systematically, either by air, fire or flu. The cured leaves have to be conditioned in appropriate chambers to ensure they don't collapse when worked on. After moisturizing, they're classified based on color, size and quality. They are later packaged weighed and bundled before they're sold to cigarette manufacturers. In the cigarette manufacturing plants, the tobacco leaves are dried again and left to age suitably. Then they are moistened, an unwanted product is separated from the leaves. The leaves are blended and compressed into cakes before they're shredded. Flavor-adding substances such as menthol are added. After this, the flavored, shredded tobacco leaves are placed on an infinite amount of cigarette paper. A filter is fixed at one end of the paper. The finished cigarettes are packed and ready for use. Number 1. Screw Manufacturing Process Screws are threaded fasteners. Usually their components include low or medium carbon steel wire. However, other metallic substitutes such as stainless steel and nickel alloys can be added. A coiled wire is fed into a straightening coil. The straightened wire is passed into a cutting machine that cuts the wire into specific lengths and a die that shapes the head of the screw blank. These blanks are then passed through thread cutting dies. Next, the blank is cut using either of the following methods. Planetary rotary die method. Here, the die holds the screw blank while various die cutting rolls work on the blank. The reciprocating die method. A flat die is immobile while the other is made to move in a reciprocating manner. The screw blank is made to pass between these two. Or thirdly, the centerless cylindrical die method. The screw blank is passed through two to three round dies to produce the needed thread. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Goodbye.